morning, lovely people, or good afternoon, wherever you're listening to me in the world. As always, I'm happy to be with you live on uh, Saturday. So uh, today is uh, a little bit of uh, change. Um, it is a session to wrap up season two of these live uh, audios. Um, if you've been following, you know that I have uh, kicked this off in uh, April 2023. We have tons and tons of uh, different topics all around brands. Uh, I will, um, if you allow me, I will take the first 10-15 uh, minutes to just give you a summary of uh, uh, basic or you know headlines of the learnings you can always go back to my YouTube channel FWD consultancy uh, I will also give you a heads up that season 3 will be starting in uh, a couple of weeks I'm preparing a lot of new content that will be exclusive to you and that will be shared on uh, my LinkedIn company page which uh, again it's FWD consultancy so make sure you subscribe uh, and follow and share. Please share. Sharing is caring, as they say. Yeah. And I think um, the type of questions that I've been getting uh, in these lives are very interesting because it gave me, um, you know, a, a direction where young people or mid-level marketeers uh, want uh, advice on. And uh, possibly uh, this is one of the few forums where you can ask questions and debate as well. I love debates. Uh, if you've been following me, you know me. And the point is debate not for debate sake, of course. It's that we refine our thinking and move to the next level. This is, this is uh, uh, my objective of all these sessions. So um, I, I will just, you know, um, drill down a little bit highlights on uh, what we've been talking since April and then I'll open the floor to you feel free to ask in both languages Arabic and English yeah uh, the bigger theme that I've been uh, noticing that most of the uh, comments and questions around tacticals which makes a lot of sense um, some challenging categories like commodity ones dairy specifically uh, portfolio and pricing structures and how you navigate risks but they also the other track I got a lot of questions on is career development and path uh, within uh, the realm of marketing uh, particularly um, there there is a lot of issues around uh, no clarity of uh, job description career path you know we, we um, I mean, one of the sessions I had was the basic of what is brand strategy and how does it look like? And there was this confusion and still is between brand, branding, marketing, uh, is there a role called strategic marketing? And if, if there is one, what, what is that called? Does, does brand strategy fall into the business strategy, which I advocate for, or it's uh, just implementation? So strategic thinking versus tactical thinking. Uh, I totally believe if you think of it this way, strategic versus tactical, um, it, it will be easier for you to implement. The whole um, talk about brands is not only strategic, every touch point, and literally, it is true. Uh, even you know the truck, the branded truck uh, uh, delivery in the street or distribution makes a difference. If that truck driver uh, misbehaves with you, the brain does register the brand. And that is uh, one of the sessions we had which were about um, uh, stimulus and how the brain reacts to it. That was neuromarketing. We have a lot of learnings and you know I do workshops on that. Fine tune your communication that is worth a lot of money so that the brain gets it right. We also spoke about uh, basic stuff like you know brand letters, uh, brand positioning concepts, changing the target for growth, and we had some some really uh, lovely examples from Lego, for example, and so forth. Understanding uh, the the target, okay, I hate that word, but you know you know what I mean. So the consumer, and then when that consumer changed into a shopper, what is the journey? 
and of course we know that it is no longer linear. So whatever your category is, you need to pinpoint in that journey where you can intercept and influence the decision to your brand. We also spoke about uh, growth verticals like innovation. We actually had two sessions on innovation. We had a lot of questions uh, with regards to that, particularly in the startup um, uh, ecosystem, uh, which we had actually another couple of sessions on startups and a zoom in on why founders uh, make it big or fail totally. Um, so uh, there is a lot of meat um, I mean, at least to me, so you tell me your feedback and whether this was useful to you or whether I should continue. I mean, I'm just laying out here uh, what I do and my intention is. Um, there's so much to say about brand. And honestly speaking, I know uh, whether the region or globally, I mean, I, I have audience from all around the world, uh, but the economies are not great. Uh, geopolitical issues, absolutely, which as we speak will be impacting uh, consumption. The one thing I can tell you for sure that people are people and habits uh, of consumption more or less the same. Yeah, It's fine-tuned, it's more or less or the way we purchase is different so forth. But if there's one thing I've learned and I always advocate for, continue, please continue to build brands. If you go back to data from COVID, and it's you know uh, out uh, on the internet, between uh, 2019 and 2021, those brands that still uh, got uh, uh, growth, or at least the least uh, of a hit because of COVID, were the big ones. Because if you think about it, if you have $1, you're going to invest it in the brand that you know you trust, you have used it before, they've always um, you know, delivered on that claim. So in many ways, uh, consumers today don't want any risks, which in a way poses the question, uh, can we do innovation? Is there room for innovation today for people to pick up something new? It's, uh, it's very, very tricky and therefore uh, you need to go thorough process of uh, innovation, which is you know, something we, I, I shared with you in the innovation sessions, plus it's something that I do as well, you know, facilitating uh, innovation uh, workshops, from ideation to launch. It's huge process. I can tell you from the work I've done in my uh, previous work as um, head of strategy uh, with the global team in Mondelez for chocolate uh, back in the days, uh, I would say a good innovation uh, would take around two years. And when I say good, that is defined as it's something that you would add to your portfolio forever. It's part of the core, it's not something seasonal, it's not an in and out, it's not an, uh, a, a flavor extension. And you know, one of the things I tackled on and I always speak about is the definition of innovation. And you know, uh, I have a lot of reservation uh, that you know, uh, you would get an, a global award for innovation because you did a line ex extension. Now, I have nothing against line extensions and, and, you know, flavors. Absolutely, I've done tons of these, whether in the size and the flavor and all of that. But in reality, it is not a, a, an innovation. You know, uh, innovation means that it's uh, a, an advantage point to yourself as a company to grow as well as an advantage point to the customer because you are filling in a gap, a need gap. It's not just more of the same kind of, but again, as, as I said, uh, that was a separate issue. One, and, and um, one of the uh, topics I also tackled on is personal branding. Uh, I don't do, um, you know, uh, personal branding as part of my services. I, I can do it one-on-one -on -one for CEOs and C-levels, but of course I wouldn't tell you whom I'm working with. But in reality, because this is a buzzword in the last uh, three, four years, uh, mainly in, in, in our region actually, I think uh, there's a lot of uh, confusion uh, you don't have to be a personal brand to be successful. And I think this is one of the most controversial statements. Uh, I can tell you that certain jobs, like me as a consultant, for example, uh, a trainer or somebody who is a senior level and wants to be a CEO, uh, this all uh, needs a personal brand, yeah? And this had also stemmed from, from years ago when uh, uh, CEOs started to 
uh, literally replace the brand logo. So if I, I showed you Apple, I'm not going to tell you the name uh, that came to your mind. You know who I'm talking about. Same thing for Microsoft. Uh, um, then this uh, transformed into CEOs being personal brands uh, like, you know, uh, Bezos or the guy from Coca-Cola or Adidas or whatever. They set the trends for what is next for their industry. Yeah. So in that, uh, in that way, people started to think, oh, I want to do a personal brand as well and maybe some young people as well. There is a difference between cleaning up your CV and, and looking good on social media versus being a personal brand. And when you build a personal brand, it is a thought process. It's the same as building a pasta brand, a construction company brand, logistics or whatever which took me again to one of the topics we had last week, and I have several uh, videos on that and audios on my YouTube around B2B. That was, that was last week when I, when I shared with you that it really doesn't matter what sector it is and there's a lot of missed opportunities for B2Bs uh, to learn from B2C. And we shared the um, relaunch of Xerox, uh, a hundred year old uh, brand which was featured in um, last month, uh, Brand Week uh, Florida, which I had the, the luck to attend virtually. Uh, amazing, amazing case studies and very inspiring. Now, for me as Dahlia, I can tell you that what keeps me going is that word, inspiring. I get inspired from you. I, I learned a lot from these live sessions um, and from my post and you know the interaction so keep them happening because you are helping me out here and I hope I'm helping you out as well